Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Picking up where we left off on April 6th, uh, what we were doing on this last episode was refactoring the use of JLabel inside of Valid Dollars. Uh, we have this idea of the self-renderable domain object, which some people really dislike, by the way, and I, I'll acknowledge that, and I, under, I understand it. But I'm still exploring the idea of not of, of doing it anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, so what we're doing is we're, we're in the middle of a somewhat complex refactoring to take out the JLabel and replace it with an interface, which I've called render target, uh, which will allow us to basically pass in anything that uh, will allow us, you know, that we can set text, icon, tooltips, text, on a foreground color on. And with the ultimate purpose of being able to render our text field in the same way. So right now if we put in a negative value for example um, we see our values turn red. Well I'd like this to be red too. Uh, similarly if we put in an illegal value we see an icon. I'd like to see an icon here too but I actually want it to be over here not on top of not replacing the text. So this is some of the stuff that we are going to that we're doing this for. This allows our UI to display itself differently but still have the dollars classes be responsible for doing the rendering logic. And I, I think that's actually very cool. So that's what we're in the midst of right now. Um, the refactoring is a bit tricky. There may be a little bit better, there may be a better way of doing this, but if there is, I don't know what it is. So I'm just carrying on. So right now we've gotten the first test up to date. Let's see how are we doing here. All of our tests should be passing. I checked into Git, I think. Yep. Yeah. And so I just need to modify all these tests to use JLabel or to use my fake render target rather than. Uh, a J level. And you know what, hold on, I'm going to go online and look up the proper usage of this as a stub or a fake or whatever. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing it right. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So uh, it, it turns out, I'm looking at uh, Martin Fowler's sort of fundamental article about called Mocks Aren't Stubs, and he describes four types of test doubles, which is what we're doing here. We're creating a, a stunt double for an object. To, just for testing. He describes dummies, fakes, stubs, and mocks, and it turns out that what I'm doing isn't exactly like any of the things he describes. We're not doing a dummy object that's passed around it was never used. It's not really a fake that has a working implementation. It's not, I guess you could call it a stub in a way, uh, and it's certainly not something that has built-in expectations. Well, really what this object is, is just a way of capturing the value so we can assert on it. I'm going to call it a stub for lack of a better name. Um, like I said, I don't, I try to stay away from this. When I, when my code needs this sort of helper, uh, I usually consider it to be a design smell and I try to pivot away to something else. But, um, so I don't pay too close attention to the type of language people use around it. So, um, which is why you don't see me using a library, a mocking library, because I try to avoid using mocks. Now, that said, I think that the, the folks who do mocks, uh, especially Steve Freeman and, um, and Nat Price, uh, the very smart people really know what they're doing, and they have a legitimate approach to design, but it's, not, it's just not my approach to design. So anyway, um, so I don't pay that much attention to the intricacies of how they name their stuff or, or do that work which may be that mean that I'm doing something that they would consider dumb. Uh, and not only would they consider it dumb, if they educated me, I would consider it dumb. But hey, you know, uh, you can only know so much. So uh, anyway, moving on. So there we go. We've got our nice little stub class. And we use it to we render the target we render twenty dollars to it and then we're able to assert on the results. So 
now we should be able to do the same thing here. Rather than saying J label, we should be able to say render target stub. Target equals new render target stub. If anybody's bothered by the fact that I'm using public variables here, um, I've never really seen the purpose of accessor and mutator methods just for something, just to be able to say a variable is private. Um, there are some benefits in terms of automated refactorings, but you know, automated refactoring tools are getting better and better, and those benefits are, are increasingly minimal. Really, we learned in school that you're never supposed to make a variable private public. And so we make them all private, and then we wrap these public setters and getters around them, which is really, semantically, from a design perspective, it's equivalent to making the variable public. So when I have something that I want to be public, I just make it public. The only reason I'm using these setter methods at all is because that's what the interface requires. And in the interface, I'm not actually trying to expose an underlying variable. I'm trying to have these, these methods actually do something. So uh, anyway... That's a soapbox topic for another day. So I didn't pay attention. Did I? Did that pass? No, it did not. Expected red when negative. Right, because I haven't migrated that code over yet. I change the name from set foreground to set foreground color. Okay. Okay, this is working out pretty cleanly. I think I can move it up into a higher gear, as Kent Beck would say. So, The other reason I like making these uh, actual public variables is it sort of emphasizes the alienness of it, the fact that this is a, a stub class. Okay, that should fail. Actually, that may not fail because I think I moved that. Yeah, I moved the black code over already. Oh, that's interesting. This is a case where having the access, direct access to those things makes the test a little bit more readable. Okay, there we go. So now we've got we've got valid darlers using render target uh, rather than label, but we can't delete the old method yet because it's being used. So next we need to go into invalid dollars.
and do the same thing. Let's see what did we said render to swing label here, but what did we call it over here? So, renders itself. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this little uh, stub class I created, I'm going to promote it to be a standalone class. Is there refactoring for that? type to new file. What is that about? I don't even understand that. Um, seems like it wants to do something a little more sophisticated than I need, which is just to believe I just need to make a new file. called and put it there. Yeah. And then um, that didn't work at all. Shouldn't have removed that import. Okay, I think we're done. Does everything still work? Yeah, I'm going to rename this to match uh, kind of a funky little convention I have, which is I like to put the test starting with an underscore and then the test helper class is starting with a double underscore. This way I can keep them all in the same package, which is occasionally helpful, and, um, and still visually sort them out in, in my list. I think that a lot of people would probably disagree with that style, and I'm okay with that, but uh, you're not here right now, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway. Boy, that is that is really ugly, though, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, we'll keep it that way for now. It's easy enough to refactor later. So <laughs> let's uh, let's go ahead and get this next one going. We just need to do all of this again. So we want to have a render target stub. And we'll come back to the rest of this in a moment. Just want to get this working. Okay, that should fail because I don't believe we've implemented that method. Yeah. So now we need to write the beginnings of that method. Now the test should pass. It does. And so next we will go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching and I will catch you next time.